Today, we are not only tracking down the greatest beer in the world, but we are doing it in the number one beer drinking city in the entire universe. See, life is short. One day you're gonna be old and dead. So you might as well do some chill shit while you're alive. Yeah, we might leave Brittany alone, but I'll tell you what, we're not gonna leave the beers alone. You might've heard of the 40 ounce, but have you heard of the 80 ounce? See, I've been all around the world. And by all around the world, I mean, been to California and Tennessee. <laughs> but this place is like no other. This place is like the real life game of Thrones cities. Every single girl is a death Betty nug of the month. If you suffer from manic sexual frustration, like me, maybe don't come here. But if you do like amazing food, drinks, and nightlife for a fraction of what it costs in California, then look no further than I'm talking about a little place called Prague. Stick around if you want to witness the greatest beer in the history of mankind. And for those who are unaware, this is part three of our Euro trip. This is me and Dan. Part one was in Sweden. Part two was in Berlin and part three is this and I'll tell you what we got some trolls on our Instagram account people are saying we look like a gay couple we're not gay we're just friends from college okay maybe we look a little bit gay but we're not I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being gay gay shreds I love gay we're just not gay internet at least not yet but stay focused we're just a couple of brages in our mid-20s trying to track down a chill vibe or two so welcome to part three So we arrived in Prague by train from Berlin, and let's just say it didn't start out so hot. The Airbnb owner wanted to play a little game of cat and mouse. The lockbox was at some deserted train station, like some weird drug deal transaction. But we did finally get the keys. We got to the building, and it looked nothing like how it was portrayed on the website. It looked like a building from the movie Hostel, with the sketchiest elevator one could imagine. But once we got inside, the place was awesome. One thing that was kind of interesting was that the doors are locked from both sides in Prague, at least in our building. Yeah, what the f Fort Knox? That's terrifying. I'm like there's, terrified to go outside. There's two doors. First place we hit was the most recommended, Ufleka, which I believe is pig Latin for vegans not allowed. And I'll tell you what, this is my type of place. This place looked exactly like Disneyland. <laughs> I love the way he says it. Say that again. Disneyland. <laughs> he loves Disneyland. Good German food, really old school medieval style. You don't even have to get up. They just have this barrage just filling up beers all day. Then they got these guys going around pretty much dying to hand you a beer. And I think there's only two options, lager and dark lager. They write it down and that's their system. I'm pretty sure this would definitely not work in America. Next place we hit was this cafe bar and it had kind of a younger scene. People just chilling outside everywhere, just throwing back pilsners. Prague is cheap. But it's not like the euro where it's pretty much one to one with the American dollar. So it's easy to throw money around. Monopoly money. I pulled out 150 bucks American at the ATM and it gave me 3,000 Prague skins. We met up with some local Bragettes and tried to understand some of the Czech culture and learn some of their language. But it's beyond difficult. It just sounds way too Russian. Dan got buddy buddy with the bartender talking about punk bands in America. And the bartender liked us so much he said that we were cool and we didn't have to pay our tab. Without question this bartender was the drunkest guy in the room. We chilled out there for a while. We ordered more drinks, but then the other bartender came in. I think this was the manager with the striped shirt and said, Fuck. 
know you guys aren't cool, get back here and pay the tab. Something tells me this happens all the time. We kept the night going, but this is where I get into the danger zone. The 10 out of 10 hangover zone. See, I can drink Pilsners all day and wake up and hit the gym at 7 a.m., but when I start mixing in cocktails, the next day can be Armageddon. But sometimes it just happens. You keep hanging, you keep drinking, more people, you know, you know, and then it happens. The 10 out of 10 hangover. Self-inflicted, temporary, manic depression where you have nobody to blame but yourself. Where it feels like every single person in the entire world is liked, loved, and respected except for you. Where you're a grown-ass man who needs to sit down in the shower. Where you want to delete your social media, but more importantly, your YouTube channel. Where you felt like you've let every single person down. This is exactly what you're going to look like after day five of Euro tripping. You have no clue whether you're drunk, sober, or even a real person or not. Nothing matters anymore except getting out of bed and just trying to turn into a robot and keep putting one foot in front of the other. But this is where you need to plot twist your own emotions. You need to appreciate this hangover because it lets you know that you're a human. We're the only species that can experience this emotion. Dinosaurs can never experience this. Plants and animals can't experience this. Embrace this emotion. Hangovers are the closest thing I'll ever know what it feels like to be emo. Maybe hangovers are the birth of emo. You have to rise up, live in shame for half the day, and keep the party rolling. The last thing you want to do is sit in bed and let that hangover evolve. Get on the Stairmaster and let's crack a brawn. We track down a cool spot. I mean, every spot seems like a cool spot. I got my meat and potatoes. Dan got his tortoise food. And the guy next to us overheard us speak in English and recommended some spots to us. His name is James from Florida and he moved to Prague, married a Czech woman, and he's living good. Smart man. You want to see how rad Prague is? We got a couple of coffees, two appetizers, two entrees, and I got a beer and it was almost 34 bucks American. That's even cheaper than Tennessee. This meal would have been $125 in California. Dan's hangover was out of control and he had to call it quits. Go home, take a nap, and recharge. But I was good to go. And it's day six, so maybe it's a good time to just get the hell away from each other for a few hours. It doesn't matter if it's your husband, your wife, your friend, your toddler. You just gotta get the hell away and do your own thing for at least a few hours. But James specifically told me to go to a place called Nase Maso and get the beef tartare. I thought I ordered beef tartare, but a medium rare filet mignon came out with a beer for only 18 bucks. You pour your own beer here. Again, this is isn't even humanly possible to happen in America. And I've never seen a knife like this, except for in my favorite movie. But I'll tell you what, if you ever see a knife like this, you know the meat's gonna be good, and it was great. This place was extremely small, but I highly recommend it as well. I think the key to vacationing is just to walk around and drink beer and just eat as much food as you can. Just don't think about anything else. This place was cool, and I finally did the math on these beers. They were coming out to about a dollar fifty American, and the way they pour them is out of control. Every light beer tastes like they're on nitrogen. Check out this dude trying to film this dude without his rugby team kicking my ass. Uh, yeah, you can't do that in America. Shirt off, sleeping at the bar, especially not in California. In California, you'd fall over, slap your head on the ground, go to the hospital and get stitched up, and then go back to the bar the next day and sue them for negligence for six million dollars. I'd have got him 10. Reconnected with Dan later on that evening, and we teamed up with this Braj, who we met who watches the channel. This is David, who runs a homebrewing club in Prague, but who is actually from Uruguay, and he brought me a beer. Cheers, Braj. Small world, my mom lives in Uruguay, and I'm due for a visit. I haven't been to Uruguay in five years, but their craft scene was great then, so it's probably even better now. David showed us some cool spots, some breweries, and just all around great nightlife. Check him out on Instagram if you want to connect with a fellow home brewer or if you're ever in Prague. And that was it for me. Time to go home. Good luck on the way back. Later, dude. Dan's going to go back to Berlin and party for a week, but I got to see if my stray cats are still alive. I had to go back to Stockholm and crash for the night. This trip would be once in a lifetime if it was once in a lifetime, but it's not because I'm going to go back and do this every single year of my life until my ship sails. Berlin and Stockholm are cool, but Prague wins by a lot. But what about the greatest beer of all time? Fortunately, it does not exist because beer is art and art is subjective. Jerry Seinfeld once said, if you go to the most expensive steakhouse, but you're with an asshole, that steak's going to suck. But if you eat 
a street corner hot dog with one of your role models, then that could be one of the best meals of your life. And I agree with stuff like that. Great beer with great friends in great places is the best beer of all time. That's as good as it gets for me. I want to thank everybody who watched this three-part series and everybody who's been supporting the channels lately, even the Hoppy Hour, buying the merch, supporting with super thankses. All proceeds are going to my upcoming surgery. I'm going under the knife tomorrow for my penis reduction. Elephantitis is a bitch. That's it, let's get out of here. Cheers to eating good, cheers to drinking good, and cheers to traveling good.